Hey, what up, though? Thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind Sports and Entertainment. It's a little weekend, morning wood. Um, a little bike down, boxing talk. Um, last night on ESPN, uh, you know, we saw the uh, light heavyweight unification fight between Arthur, Artur Baturbiev and uh, Alexander Vostik. And uh, let's go back to the Quadratio uh, Abdu Kakarov. Abdu Kakarov. <laughs> Dude got a hell of a name. And 38 uh, year old former world champion um, Luis Calazo. Um, I don't understand why Calazo chose to fight the way he did the entire night uh seems like he could have tried to slow things down a bit maybe make abdu kakarov uh sit down a little bit and kind of outbox him in that manner versus just walking towards him with his hands down i don't know if it was a mental thing a mental edge he was trying to get or whatever but uh it seemed like he just made the fight easy for uh Quadratio or uh, the Punisher, but uh, I give um, I give the cat some credit for you know not necessarily fighting his style, having to be on the move so much, uh, you know, staying outside and, and and backing up most of the most of the fight, and uh, just kind of settling into taking what um, Colazo was giving him. You know, which was a wide open head, and um, like I, said, I, I, I thought uh, Colazzo could have changed it up at some points and and, and uh, mixed the attack up a little bit and made made the guy think it, and definitely not sit in and get into a rhythm. Uh, you know, and, and and become you know he became increasingly uh, accurate with uh, his shots and whatnot, and. And, uh, you know, they had to cut there late in the fight. It was at the ninth, tenth round. Uh, but he, you know, he wanted going away. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens in terms of, uh, you know, him being the mandatory to uh, the, the division's money man right now. It's going to be very hard to put that fight together. Uh, not a bad outing for uh, Philadelphia heavyweight Sonny Kanto. Um, Stephen Lyons uh, didn't, you know, he yeah, he didn't really seem to be there to put in a fool's night, a full night of work. Um, and he quit after the first round. He retired on his stool after the first round. Uh, but like I said, man, Kanto, I like I like the way he moves. I, I like his, uh, you know, good size and range and all of that. Um, good hand speed. I love his jab. Uh, kind of pops it off his shoulders and whatnot. That's very sudden. Uh, you know, he's, what, 5-0 and now? I mean, he has plenty of work to do. Um, you know, the, the good thing will be to stay busy. The good thing to see will be to stay busy, continue to improve. Um, I don't understand why they said he has to fill out more. I mean, I... I like to see him fill out the right way. Like, don't lose that volume and that agility and turn into one of these heavyweights, you know, looking to throw a handful of punches per round. Can't get out of the way of nothing. Uh, you know, I, I, I like to see him just, just improve his skills and his technique and whatnot. Was there any the Dorno brothers with, uh, you know, relatively easy wins, easier wins, uh, still, uh, you know, still developing. I missed the uh, Michael Seals fight and a uh, heck of a performance by Julian uh, Rodriguez. What's his name? Hammerhands, too. Um, he's a thick 140 pounder, but I think they said he might have missed weight. I didn't see how tall he was. But hell of a chin from uh, his opponent, Doranio 
the Ronio, uh, all that work he did, you know, throughout the first six, seven rounds or whatever it was, or five, five rounds, and uh, to get into the sixth there and then land that that uh, sweeping left hook that uh, completely took the Ronio out. Uh, and he still got up trying to continue, but a hell of a beard on that dude. Uh, good win for Rodriguez, though. Um, I, I like how he put his shots together, put his combinations together. Uh, like they mentioned on the, on the telecast, though, you know, he just might be one of those guys, you know, power boxing, everything hard. Uh, but like I said, he threw some good combinations and everything. For the most part, I like what I saw. It's just, uh, and then he did get the knockout, you know. So it's hard to say his style doesn't work. But um, just seems like, yeah, you could mix it up a little bit more. But, hey, you, when you get the end result that you get, it's, it's really hard to challenge that. Uh, going back up to the main event, man. With uh, I took our I took better Baturbiev going into the fight. Like I said, with Volstig, nothing against him really. Just um, you know, he had the better win on his uh, his record. I do like uh, Baturbiev's trainer, Mark Rams. He is starting to be a a trainer that I'm starting to watch more and more. But um, you know, Volstig. It, it would be a matter of, of what could or, or what would um you know what would um Baturbiev do against Vostik's boxing mix of boxing and power. And I think um you know he just withstood every all of that, you know, the jabbing and um you know some of the power shots that uh it was a good one too in there somewhere that uh Vostik landed in the middle in the mid round somewhere. But um, again, you know, I saw, I happened to be in the building last year when he was on, when Baturbiev fought Callum uh, Johnson and got dropped with a huge shot. And, you know, I've been saying this for a couple of years, man. We, we, we knock fighters for getting dropped and for being knocked down. And we, we, we focus on he's been dropped. Uh, I think we learned quite a bit about the, uh, the resolve, you know, about the metal of a fighter in that situation. And um, I think that was basically my uh, summary of it was if it was a uh, if it went to decision, Vosdig might win. But I thought between the two, I thought Baturbiev could get the KO. And uh, you see that uh, Vosdig was ahead on the cards, uh, you know, at the time of the stoppage. So uh, it was kind of playing out that way. But uh, you know, Baturbiev, man, he's he's a gritty dude. Uh, it, it, it's not always pretty. I said his hot rod performance, I thought uh, he got a little sloppy here and there or rushed a little bit uh, in some regards. But, um, yeah, I just feel like, you know, he was the, the, the you know, you it's a lot of ways to win a fight. And uh, he basically broke uh, Vostik down. Uh, the body shots there in the seventh and the eighth round, I think, were pretty telling. Uh, that, that moment where Vostik turned away and, was doing, you know, like he was shaking something off his glove or whatever he was doing after that good, a good body shot that uh, Baturbiev stuck, uh, snuck in there. So I kind of didn't understand, you know, how he got to turn his back and, and walk across the ring and get a, you know, a brief uh, breather and a moment to regroup, but it happened. But um, anyway, like I said, man, going into that finishing moment with the three knockdowns there in the 10th or whatever, uh, you know, Baturbiev is just a, he's a pressure guy, uh, heavy handed. And, uh, you know, we have a new unified champion. Uh, I thought the fight was pretty good. Um, uh, at the light heavyweight division, man, I mean, it's crazy to have a, uh, you know, a division where there aren't really any Americans <laughs> making any type of noise whatsoever. Uh, you know, Marcus Brown has been taking down a peg or two, you know, and we need to see what he does coming back. Always felt like it was a hell of a style, a clash of styles with him and the guys up at the top. Because uh, of the physicality of some of the other guys. Um, you know, do we see anything between, uh, well, you know, uh, 
Kovalev has the, the business to take care of with uh, with Canelo in a couple of weeks. So, uh, what will this division be? You know, and, and what will, what will be the uh, the outlook for it here in the next three to four weeks? We'll have to see. Uh, Bevo, uh, him against a Baturbiev, You know, I, I I'd watch it. Uh, Bevo would have to do some things that I don't think we've kind of seen him do just yet. Uh, but not, you know, a completely one-sided fight. Uh, you know, if I'm thinking of it off the top of my head. Uh, I did see where Buwati, there was some talk of Bevo going over to the UK to fight Buwati. Again, Buwati is not completely dissim dissimilar to, uh, to Marcus Brown, uh, but more of a boxer. Uh, I don't think his hands are as heavy as they've been, uh, as we've been led to believe. A uh, good puncher, though, but just not, you know, lights out power, uh, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, like a, a good puncher, though. Solid puncher. Um, and maybe he could get by Bevo. I don't know. But just like I said, going up and, you know, to, to get a title and having to go to Baturbiev, um, uh, it's going to be a challenge because because he has an interesting formula for how he wins matches. So well, let me go ahead and grab this breakfast for the house. I got to stop and get some creamer. Uh, thank you. And uh, we'll go from there, man. It, honestly, a fight on a Friday night to change it up a bit, man, I thought was a good thing. Sometimes that's frowned upon. You know, some people can can have their negative comments about you know Friday night boxing and whatever, whatever. But I think, man, the open uh, with the with the start times of some of these main events, man, I actually think it's it it's, it, it was a uh, it was a good thing. It was a positive. And uh, let me get ready, man. Like I said, I got some stuff to do. Got to check out this Michigan and Penn State game tonight to see what's gonna be the future for uh, for for Coach Harbaugh. And then um, I'm going to check out this Ad Astra later with uh, Brad Pitt and uh, Tommy Lee Jones, I believe, is in that one. So, hey, bite down boxing, man. Don't let them count you out. Peace.